it's just makeup. <laughs> Today is Valentine and I am going on a date. I have never said that on this channel. Anyway, but we are going on a date. Imagine I went to the salon and then as I was halfway, the lights went off. The lights went off. So I don't have any color, any nail polish here. It's just very weird. But I am doing makeup. I'm trying to do as fast as I can because I, I spent too much time in the salon. I was there by 9.30. I left by 12, almost 12.30. I and I had not finished. I don't know why, why they took that long. Ah. I got confused. So that's why we are looking the way we are. They're not bad, but you know, without that gel, they are kind of sharp and also look weird. But I want to first do my makeup and then I first buy the salon, which is not what I wanted at all. Because now I'm going to, I need to be late and I hate being late. Today I'm trying the primer. I, I tried it once. On the day I was shooting the Gikomba haul, I tried it and I don't know, I feel like it's a bit watery, but I like the fact that it, it spreads like really well, you see? Really, really well. Before I apply my foundation and stuff, don't put too much. Let me talk as I do my makeup. I've decided to include the dating side of my life <laughs> on this channel. This is a trial, let's see how we do. This is not the actual color. Don't worry that I'm looking to oranges. I'm using the ring light and there's a way the ring light just brightens everything and overdoes. But you'll see how it will turn out. So I was saying I have decided to introduce my dating scenarios, my dating, the dating side of my life here because one, I also want to document that part of my life. You never know. I might meet someone on all of these dates and be like, I love that I don't remember. And also, I have different age groups watching me. Most of the people who watch me actually, when I check my YouTube analytics, there's a way YouTube can inform me of who the audience are. Most of the people who watch me are around my age. But I also have people who are younger who watch me and those who are older than me who watch me. Ah! That makes me feel so happy. So, for those who are younger than me, especially, there are things I didn't know at that age, 19, 20, 21, that I know now. I also want to share information like that, because it might help someone. This is the concealer. I just want to highlight certain parts of my face, like below my eyes, you know, up here. Sometimes I don't normally even put foundation up here. I just dab here and then what is left is what I do here. That is what I should have done. But it's also okay. Like this. So I just want to highlight this part of the face to brighten up this part. And I'm going to blend it using a blender. I like applying foundation with a brush and then blend with this. But now I want it to be wet, so I'm going to sprinkle some. You can sprinkle some water. I'm going to sprinkle some setting spray. But for the foundation, for the concealer, give it a minute or two. Don't just give it a minute or two. Good makeup is makeup that takes time. And I don't like the fact that I don't have a lot of time now, but we're going to work with what we have. So, let's see how this series goes. Because <laughs> I sometimes have unpopular opinions concerning dating and the dates and I hope people don't attack me. If you don't agree with whatever I'm saying, just disagree but respectfully because I've also not called anyone names or something. So I want to talk about this thing that some people usually tell girls that when you're going on a date, especially on a first date, that you don't do too much, don't look like you want to impress the guy. That's the worst and the laziest advice that anyone can give you. That's something I can't tell my friends. So I can't tell you the same. Now to just show up looking anyhow so it doesn't seem like you're very desperate or you're trying to impress the guy. Are you trying to impress the guy only? That's who you are. You are someone who cares about their appearance. And then, 
are you going to like be in your house and then you jump on a broom and land on the on the table you know where you're having a date no you're going to meet people along the way even if you're using a cab you're going to interact with people even the waiters even people who are coming into the restaurants you want to present yourself well you want to always put your best foot forward or show the best version of yourself what, what if the guy is a jack and you realize ah oh, this is not the guy for me and there's someone else who maybe would have spotted you if you had even applied oil on your face or taken time to do your hair or dress well. But now you know what? You're only thinking about the guy that you're going to meet because you want to, you don't want to impress him, to look like you're impressing him. That's terrible advice. Always look your best when you're going on a date. Whether it is first date or the hundredth date. And especially if it is the first date. Because we all know that first impressions matter. We know. Why am I even repeating this? And there's something about men. You may disagree. But me, me, I don't normally focus on what men say so much. I look at their actions. What do they do? Let me tell you. It is very, very easy for a man to put you in a category. And once he has put you in that category, it is hard <laughs> to get out of that box. For example, he looks at you and he's like, okay, this one is for fun. Even, sometimes it's not even something that the lady does. It's just like, a man meets you and be like, oh, this one is for fun, I'm just going to have fun with her. It is very hard for you to change that man's mind and not for him to start looking at you as someone who he can have a long-term thing. So you show up there looking shabby because you don't want to impress the man. The man already has put you in a category of not like a very classy or put together woman now you are going to work 10 times harder to change that perception now you want to overdo for the next i don't know just look your best on day one that's something that i do look your best leave a good impression okay make your date feel like they are like honored to to have you around to be in your presence huh? make them feel like they want to show you off yeah? oh my friend is here. Can you pass by and say hi, hi to my friends? They want to show all you off. Not like they want to finish the date in a hurry so they can disappear. Now they don't even want to walk with you to your car, to the car, to wherever it is you are going because you just showed up looking anyhow. That is terrible advice. I'm putting on red, yeah. I'm one of those people who are going to put on, who will put on red on Valentine's. Many if people think that it's overdoing, I will do it. It's not deep red, like shouting red, but it's kind of maroonish, kind of brownish, kind of red. You will see it. And also, I want to share like things like, if you just need guidance, so maybe you know some things that you don't know other things, I'm going to show you like what you should do from the time you get to the date to the time you leave, okay? Sort of like a dating etiquette or first date etiquette. I'm excited. I mean, I love going on dates. I don't understand when people are saying, oh, dating. I get excited. When I'm going on dates, I'm going to meet new people. Butterflies. You know? <laughs> Catch you later. Let me finish this. Imagine the lights went off when I was doing my makeup and I had to go finish my makeup outside because you know my house has no natural light. A lot, a lot has just been going on with the lights and the nails. And if I continue, I'm going to be late. And I like respecting people's time. So let me just go on this date. And then I'll come back and teach you what I was talking about. The dating etiquette. It's a body con dress. That's the color. That's the height. Then it can go lower. Okay. This is the front. And can I hear a commotion for the back of the dress? <laughs> And I have on some low heels, so I like how I like how I look. Okay, love it. He is going to get me food, so that's why I even taking this time to record because I didn't want to start recording when he was here. But uh, we are we are having we are flowing well. We are having a conversation. We've talked for about thirty minutes. We have a lot of things in common, and this place is gorgeous. I've never been to this place. It's like a, sort of like a private club. Yeah, like a club. It's like a club. Something not club where people go to dance and and sip alcohol. You know, clubs where there are things that happen. Yeah. 
I don't know if anyone is watching me. I'm just feeling weird uh, recording the life of a content creator. I've never recorded myself on a date, but things are going on well. And I love the ambience. I love the conversation. I've learned something new right now. And it has nothing to do with the dating, but we're talking about how to approach sponsors, my brands for sponsorship. People, people need to go out. It's not only about just romantic things. You learn a lot. And we'll talk more later about that. But yeah, the date is going well. Again, it's happy. Yeah, you see that. Yeah, these are his shades. And I'm, I'm, I'm taller than him. <laughs> okay, we'll talk later. Watching how you move, yeah, like where I see Got our favorite station, taking in your fragrance That's an easy way to make a bitch go weak I could do us every day, we're taking turns when I play Want you to give me all of you like we got nothing to say Love all the faces you make, I'll do whatever it takes on your knees, but ain't got nothing to pray. Hey, hey, hey. Wonder if you stay for a while. Never wanna lose on not time. You know, you serve, you serve using the brackets. Oh, yes, so throw it. Uh -uh. Lift, kidogo. Okay, let me. It's okay. Good job. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good job. Nice. Good job. Nice. Okay, let let it bounce. Uh, so here, so the date has come to an end. I'm leaving. I'm in the washrooms. He's waiting for me outside because he's escorting me out of this place. We'll talk later. Had a bounce back about two to three times. Dealing with your ass, got me working overtime. Got me some slack, I've been losing my mind. No, I'm not fine, you've been killing my fight.
Have you ever looked in the mirror and not seen yourself? Like you got lost somewhere along the way? Well, maybe you just need some help getting back. But that's not something they tell you these days. I never wanted to be that girl. But I'm stuck on this rural street. And my smile won't come, but my hair still curls. And I guess that's how they recognize me. I'm not actually here anymore. I've forgotten what I came here come, for. Come, come. You at the bright eyes. Sasa. You at Mambo? Mandazi ni how much? Mandazi ni five. Ni eke zambao. Good. I love it. I've not had lights since 12. My lights just keep coming for five minutes, they disappear. Coming for five minutes, they disappear. Yeah. I was editing today, I was editing the Gikomba hall, then I remembered that this, imagine these one days, I didn't film one part because I was filming two, two, where I'm talking and then also portraiting and modeling because that one shows the full. I didn't film this one and then my makeup was dropped that day today I'm not even done a bruise. So I want to do this real quick. I want to film this so I can add it. Ah, the struggles of content she, She's been telling me that, oh, you know what? We're learning French. I'm learning French. I'm like, French where? Well, this well, well, level. Eh? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Some like this. There's no way they're learning French. I was not even told that they were learning like extra subjects. And then until one day she said like three French words. I was like, I studied French in high school. I remember those words. Like they are really learning French. Okay, send me, send me the French words that you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like this. Comment tu te plais? Comment tu te plais? Je suis une fille. What do What do they mean? Comment tu te plais means What is your name? Mm -hmm. And je me plais. It means. Uh -huh. My name mm. is Taraji mm. and mm. the sweet fear it means you are saying you are a girl. So much I, appear, I know the first two, so uh, that is definitely French. Let me film this and then let's catch up if the lights have not gone again. <laughs> I've done that video but I don't know. I just feel like it's not like the, the ones that I did on that day. The vibe is not the same. Even the makeup look is not the same. I'm not... I don't know, maybe I'm, I hope it's not noticeable, but I'm not as, also I said, I just feel like even the quality is not the same as that day, I don't know, but it's just different. But these are the challenges of content creation, sometimes you have to, something, you do something or do something you had forgotten and fix it in there. So yesterday this guy, I didn't actually know that I was going to go out with him, because given my previous history, most of the Valentines I've spent single, I don't know why. It's very few Valentines that have been with someone. So even this person we started talking like a few days to Valentine and then we were vibing well, we were the conversation was flowing and then he asked me out on Valentine. Like on Valentine's Eve, he asked to see me on the next day on Valentine's. I was like, you know what? Why not? We've been vibing well and I have like no plans and I wasn't going to see anyone. So I was like, let me go and see him. So I loved the date. And bearing in mind that I haven't gone on a date for like eight months plus i thought maybe it was going to be horrible but it was, it was amazing first of all this guy is a gentleman and he's asked me before he does something he asks me he asks a lot and i love that like the date was just all about a lot of consent consent he was not just doing things he was asking me asking me he actually recommended the meal that i had it was pepper steak He's the one who recommended me. Even the way he recommended this meal, he was just like, there's this amazing meal called blah, blah, blah. We have this chef. He prepares it well, blah, 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 blah. You really, really love it. So would you consider maybe... Like, there's a way he just asked nicely. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, the name even Pepper Steak sounds yummy. Like, I would love to have it. He kept asking me, you know, before doing anything, like, would you like to do, go here? Or can we check out this? Like, I loved that a lot, the asking. And then he made sure that I was taken care of. This guy had clients by the way, and he told me he had clients there. But he came, we chatted for about 30 minutes non-stop, and then he excused himself. He said he's going to take care of my food. He, he went and ordered the food. He came back, we chatted a bit. 
the food came we ate a little bit actually i was the one doing the eating because he said he had we were supposed to meet at two but when it reached 12 and i was not yet done at the salon i knew that i was going to be late so i asked him that we push it to three you know so yeah i asked two hours before guys if you're going to be late please don't wait until it's two and you're supposed to be meeting at 12 and like oh i'm running late can we like two hours before so he said it's okay we can push it to three so he told me that he wanted us to have lunch together but when i pushed to three i he just decided to have lunch because he was hungry so he just tasted a bit i was like ah you just like eat with me a little bit so he just did that and then we went to do and then he went to look um to check on his clients and then came back but he made sure that i was taken care of i didn't feel like i was abandoned like i was just there and he was there in his meetings he was able to communicate nicely and then come and then we chat a bit like that so we got from there and so i love the way that he took care of me like he made sure that i had whatever it is i needed so we moved from there, we got into the members lounge, we sat there for a few minutes, had some fun, we were just vibing, just conversation, and then from there, that's when we moved to now squash, where he was teaching me how to play squash. So, the first thing that I liked about him was, I think, a few minutes in, I don't know what we were talking about, I don't know, previous events or whatever, and he mentioned one of the sponsors, and that particular sponsor is someone that has sponsored our events at my former place of work, and used to communicate with them, and that person, that company is sponsored products, they've sponsored us uh, with products like twice, and here, he was saying they sponsored them with money, so that got my curiosity, now we started talking like, business and stuff i was like how did you get them to give you money instead of products we've been pushing them to give us money and they've been always been like what and then he gave me a strategy which i've never even thought of an approach ah! so from there i learned something i was like wow this is nice i'm going to share with my former uh colleagues so they can use that tactic but i also now going forward it's something that i use for brand sponsorship so at that point i was like I'm, I've learned something, so I love that. Okay, that was number one. And then the conversation was just smooth. We talked about a lot of things. We were not struggling. We were laughing and everything. So I loved the date. Loved it. And then before I left, he asked me for a second date. Said he wanted to see me again. Yeah. So <laughs> disclaimer, guys. I'm not dating anyone. We are not in a relationship. We are not getting married. It was just a first date. I'm just open to connecting with people. So don't start wishing me a happy marriage <laughs> and wedding and stuff. Let's take it easy. <laughs> so that's a summary. So let me now tell you, like, if you're going on a date, let me walk you through how you can do it. Okay. A lot of things happened yesterday. Maybe I've, I've forgotten something I've mentioned. This is our restaurant setup. So, the first thing that I want to talk about might seem obvious, but it's not obvious because I didn't know it when I was younger and I made those mistakes. There's one day, the first guy I think I, who pulled the chair for me, it was a struggle. Because, you know, not every guy pulls even chairs for women. So, sometimes you are not used to that. So, when he pulled the chair for me, I didn't know what to do. So, this, this was the scenario. This is going to be our chair. Don't mind. I don't have an actual chair now. So... <laughs> Okay, I'm so dramatic. I'm doing a whole demonstration. So this was the chair. So I got to the table and then the guy pulled the chair. And then I went and I sat on it. So what happened is the guy was trying to now push me closer to the table. It was a struggle. So we were just like... And I was like, why does this not feel smooth? <laughs> why are we struggling? Maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. Even some men don't know the right thing to do, so that's why I'm showing you. So <laughs> let's show, let, uh, let me show you the correct thing. <laughs> so this is the seat, this is the chair. As a lady, when you come, so you stand by. Don't just come and sit. Ah, you stand, let the guy give the guy the opportunity to be a gentleman. So you stand by, see you? And then the guy pulls the chair. So when the guy pulls the chair, I'm bending because if I stand up, he won't see the chair. So when the guy pulls the chair, you need to come and stand at a good distance while you are comfortable, okay? With, you know, that distance so that the guy now pulls the chair closer to you and then you sit. You see how smooth that is? Because, you know, the guy cannot pull the chair not that the chair is here, Cindy. The guy cannot pull the chair and then push it, but because they don't know if you want to sit this far from the table or if you want to sit this close. 
to the table. You are done with is that. So that's why after they pull the chair, so that's why after they pull the chair again, you come in, stand, okay, where you want the chair to be. And then the guy, if you have the guy and you've never, never known this or done this, this is how you do it. You pull it now closer to them. And you sit upright okay so now that you're seated let me sit on the chair it's more comfortable <laughs> so now that you're seated what next you have your bag the bag that you're going with on a date it's supposed to be if maybe this size if maybe like i carry this because i was putting on my sandals but these are smaller don't carry the big bags like you're going on a vacation or you're going to spend the weekend at that person's place you might scare someone so with your bag let me tell you what not to do with your bag. Now you've arrived at your date and then... Wrong. Don't put your bag on the table. The table is for food and set up. Wrong. Don't put your bag on the floor. Your expensive bag, even if you bought it at 50 shillings, your expensive bag that you bought at 50 shillings, that is very disrespectful to your bag. You're not respecting your bag and you're not showing that your bag is not expensive. And it is. Even if it is five bob, it is. Don't do that. Where do you put your bag? Option one. There are restaurants that have a hook under the table. And I think Java is one of them. I never saw a hook there. So they have like a hook. It's like a peg. Let me come. So that hook is like a peg, but it's under the table. It's like this. It's like this under the table and then you hang your bag. So it's normally under the table like this. So first of all, just fill, fill it out wherever you are if there's a hook. If there's a hook, that is where your handbag is supposed to go. Like that. No one is seeing it. It's not on the table and it's not bothering anyone. There are other restaurants that give you the kahook. Normally, it's normally like metallic. You hook it here. They just put it, they give you the kahook itself. It's like a portable thing. It's supposed to be like this. They put it, they give you the kahook. You hook your bag here. You put it like this. You see? Your bag is there on that kahook. Hook is number one. Number two, most restaurant setups have like a four, they accommodate four chairs or four people. So it's one, two, three, four. That is the, uh, that was the case with the restaurant we were at yesterday. So what I did actually, the first time I came, I put the bag behind me. That's one option. On the chair. Put the bag behind you on the chair. That's why you need a small bag. Okay? It will fit well. If not, then you put it on one of the chairs. Okay? So that's what I did yesterday. When I got there, it was behind. And then after we talked out for a while, I was like, ah, I got my bag. And then I put it on one side there. It's not disrupting anything, anyone, but not on the table. It's unhygienic and this is for food. Option three, if you have to, the small, small bags, but I don't actually recommend that, is you can put it on your laps. It's like having a phone on your laps. It's very, it doesn't disrupt a lot of things, but that should be your last option. If maybe you don't have any chairs or whatever, just put it behind you, I'm telling you. Yeah, like that, just out of sight. And your phone should also be in that bag. Don't put your phone on the table. Let me bring a phone also for demonstration. I'm telling you. Teacher Linda. <laughs> so this is your phone. Two days are talking and your phone is just part of the date. Wrong. And most people think that if they do this, then it's okay because no one is looking at the screen and it's not disrupting anyone. It should not be on the table. It's not food. Put your phone in the bag so you can concentrate on your date. If you're expecting an important call, let me say you have a nanny. Me there, I'm a, I have a child. There are phone calls I can't ignore. You know, for example, you know, this is the person who is looking after my child at time or this is my child's school you know, teacher. I have to pick that. You can communicate, ah, I need to pick this. It's my child's school. It's my child's school. Don't need to go into details. I need to pick this. It's my kid's nanny, okay? Or if you're expecting that call, you're like, oh, 
you, you just tell them, okay, I might be expecting a call from my nanny. Let's say it's her time to leave, whatever. I want something happens. I might be expecting. You just communicate to your date. But if not, if you need to just have your phone calls, you just do motion. You can excuse yourself, go to the washroom. But we'll talk about that later. Okay? So you've tackled the bag and you've tackled phone. Okay? What next? So there are things that fall under the category of fine dining or dining etiquette when you're dining when, when you're on a date with someone or when you're dining with others or even if someone invites you to their home and they have that fine dining setup. Those things include like things like how to hold your fork and spoon and um, knife, sorry, uh, which uh, which spoon to use for soup, which glass is for champagne for wine, whatever. I'm not going to go into that. There are things that I know. If you're having like a seven cost thing, a seven cost meal, I'm going to struggle a bit. But three cost meal, whatever, there are things I know, but I'm not going to share that now. This is a trial. I want you guys to tell me if you like this kind of content. Because I might be rambling on and you're not interested. But now I want you to talk about just the date. I'm a date generally. Okay. So the only things I'm going to tackle are bad manners on the table. When you're on a date, the thing you need to remember is that you need to be respectful kind and respectful to your date and to those around you that includes the servers and everything okay so be respectful give your date the attention that they deserve and don't do anything that will ruin anyone's appetite it's easy for some people to lose their appetite so don't do anything that involves bodily fluids from your nose your mouth or anything that is going to disgust someone Things like, hey, hey. Uh, now you've sneezed in someone's food, all the things are there. Like, hey. Now you have your toothpick and you're like, hey. 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 Anything that may disgust someone, please don't do it. Don't talk about the toilet. Don't talk about, I don't know, accidents where someone's arm was flying. And anything that will ruin someone's appetite, do not. Do not apply your makeup on the table, on the at the restaurant. The thing that I see most most ladies doing is lipstick and lip gloss. You've done, you finish eating, you feel like your lips are dry, you move your lip gloss. At the restaurant, no. You excuse yourself and go to the washrooms. And you don't say, I'm going to the toilet. Now I'm imagining the toilet and I'm eating. Things that can ruin someone's appetite. You can say something like, I'm stepping into the ladies. I'm going to the ladies. I'm going to use the ladies. The ladies. The ladies. Not toilet. Toilet. So when you go to the ladies, you can sneeze. You can do your shoe. Whatever. You can reapply your lipstick. You can look at your teeth. Do all those things. No. But if you need, if you have to use toothpick on the table, which I don't think you need to. <laughs> Why do you need to? But if you need to, you cover your mouth. And do it. Keep in mind, don't ruin anyone's appetite. If they don't see you, it's better than if they see you. I'm not going to talk about eating and whatever. The only thing I'm going to mention here is these are not weapons. I'm recording using my front camera, so this is my right, right hand and this is my left. Don't tell me you're holding the knife in the wrong hand. This is the right hand, okay? When you're eating, some people, when you're eating and you've eaten something, isn't you? Now you want to talk. Some people are just like, eh, and imagine why? Do you want to cut people? These are not weapons. Don't, 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 don't wave the knife. Don't swing, swing the knife. Everything. Don't do it. And can I do napkin too? Okay. I think I'm mixing fine dining and let me just do a little bit. So the napkin most of the time you normally find it on the table. I don't know how they fold it. It's a skill. I don't know. They normally do something that looks good. But you normally find it on the table. Okay. The napkin to the best of my knowledge. I'm not an etiquette coach, guys. Please don't come for me. I'm sharing what I've learned over the years and what I know. Is that this napkin is meant to go on your laps. You spread it and put it on your laps the aim of this napkin is to prevent food from spilling to your clothes so for example you're eating let's say you're eating something like soup you don't have those spoons for soup but you know the spoons for soup is a bit deep and it's wider than the normal spoon and you scoop it this is how you scoop soup away from you not like this 
So after you know you've scooped the soup and whatever. <laughs> One day when I have this, these things and you're interested, I may show you. But after scooping it, so you bring it to their mouth. This napkin will prevent the food or the soup from spilling to your cloth. That's the aim of this napkin. Please, please, let's not be doing, uh, I don't know what you're doing. And some people also put it here. I'm not so sure about whether or not it should be put here. But I think if you have like maybe a very white top or you feel like this part of the, the uh, this part of your cloth might also get food, then you can put it here. But majorly it's supposed to be here. And then you can also use it to dab your mouth when you've had food. Let's say you've eaten and there's food here. Dabbing, dabbing. This is dabbing. Dab, dab. Not, not. When it comes to the bill, I think different countries have different rules. There are countries that believe in 50-50 where the women feel like if you... Pay for them, it means like they cannot pay for themselves or something. I've never, I can never understand that. But as a general rule, it's the guy who has invited the girl out. You pick up the tab. Unless the lady has suggested that you split the bill. If you're a lady, don't do these things of you are trying to test the man. <laughs> I just remember the friend of mine, Maki, I'll, I'll, I'll remind her. There's one day she just offered to test the guy and she was like, oh, I can, I can pay. And the guy was like, yeah. And then she paid and she was so so mad she blocked him if you're not the one paying please don't do those trying the guy or you testing the guy don't you grab the bill you just want to see you just want to see how much you spent have you spent like twenty thousand? <laughs> there's so many times i don't even know how much the bill was it's not your business if you're not sorting it out why are you looking at it the fact that you can you're even taking it you might even give the guy ideas that maybe you are willing to split 50 50 if you're not Leave it on the table, the guy will take care of it, or the waiter will give it to the guy. If you are a guy and you feel like you need to go 50-50 with a woman, I don't understand why you would want to do that, communicate that early so that she comes prepared with the money to do that. But either way, as a lady, don't go out on a date when you have zero cash. It's unless it's someone you really, really trust and you know this person has never failed you. Even yesterday, I had my own cash as I was going to the date. So the date is over, the guy has escorted you to maybe the cab, you know, we've ordered the cab, the guy has walked you outside, you've gotten to the cab, or if you are using a matatu, the guy has escorted you to the stage, make sure you've gotten into the matatu. And if you are a guy and you're not taking an Uber for a guy, you give her that money for bus fare, surely. Surely, even, even, even in public transport, now we are, we, are, we are going to struggle. You take care of the lady fully until she gets home. As a lady, when you're leaving the restaurant, I wish I'd written things down, but I'm just thinking of them as they come. As you're leaving the restaurant, that's the time to thank this guy, okay? And I didn't mention, you already thanked him in the middle of the date too. You're like, oh my goodness, this place is so beautiful. You have such good taste. Oh my goodness, this food is so tasty. Thank you for choosing it. Oh. Like, make someone feel appreciated. They've taken the time to plan this date, to bring you here, to pay for the food, whatever. So you appreciate them. Not in a way like you've never eaten before, you've never eaten for the past seven years, and now you're so grateful that they've actually given you food. Ah, Go easy. But just thank them. As you're leaving the restaurant again, thank them. Tell them, oh, thank you so much for this date. I had such a wonderful time. Maybe you are, you are such good company. If he was, like my date for yesterday was such good company. And I told him, you are such good company. I was never bored. And then this place is so nice. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. I had a wonderful time. And then you get into your cab or whatever and you go. To kiss or not to kiss, that depends on you. There are times I've kissed on a first date, there are times, many times I've not. So that depends on how you're feeling the vibe. But if you decide for, to go for a kiss, let it be like a, a light kiss, not like a heavy petting to a point where now the guy wants to cancel everything and the cabo so you, you guys can book a room upstairs. No? <laughs> Why am I falling down? No. Just like a light one, okay? So you thank them so that when you get home, you don't start telling them. That's the excuse we normally use as ladies. That I just wanted to let you know that I got home safe. I did that yesterday because the guy requested. If the guy requests that, please let me know when you arrive safe. Then you do. And then you keep the conversation brief. Because it is very easy for that conversation to start going the way you are looking. Oh my God, what are you putting on? Have you showered? Are you in your 90s? Oh, in the next minute now you are all sexual. And 
it, it's it, you're moving fast so you thank them as the date ends so you avoid all these and if they say that you need to tell them when you reach home tell them when you reach home and then wish them a lovely night <laughs> i feel like a coach now and this video is long i was, I was looking at it and panic i'm like should i have made it a separate video but that is it guys i'm not an etiquette coach so i don't want you to be like a, so do you, these are the rules you should do it's just something that i've learned on my journey of like being better knowing myself is something that i've learned uh from being on dates so yeah I don't know if it has helped. If some of these things have helped, or maybe you didn't know these things and now you do, please let me know in the comments. And these things you can apply with even your man. It's not just with a stranger, even your man. Your man should feel at all times that he's in the presence of a lady, a woman, not his fellow man. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, this was on wednesday and as you know my nairobi living vlogs go for a whole week but i figured if this is already 42 minutes long it was going to be too excessive so i didn't include the footage from the other days the rest of the days that i filmed because this segment segment took uh too long but i'm also considering uh, let me know if you'd want me to be putting them in the vlogs or to be putting them as separate videos i don't know but let me end it here thank you so much for watching this video now I'll sana and see you in my next vlog. Bye-bye.